G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Now I've done a few videos on soldering uh, recently, that uh, tin based solder, the difference between lead and tin based solder. And I also did a soldering tutorial quite some time ago, which I showed you the tools you need to do good soldering and the techniques that make good soldering possible. Now, this is the Hobby King, well it's a off-brand, what is it? Yihua, a Yihua 936 uh, soldering station. And it's, uh, it's an off-brand copy of a Hako or Heiko soldering station. I mean, these things, there are lots of these things on the internet. eBay is a, you know, a wash with them. This is from Hobby King, and it's pretty good value, I've got to say, before I even get into it. Now, um, it is like a typical soldering station. You've got your base unit, which plugs into your mains power, your AC voltage, a little connector on the front here, which goes off to your actual soldering iron, which has a matching connector there. So the soldering iron itself works on a relatively low voltage. You don't have the full mains voltage. Not like those ones you plug straight into the power where you've got 230 volts right up here inside the handle. And if something goes wrong, well, you know, you could be in trouble. Now, these run on a much lower voltage and it's controlled because inside the tip of this iron, there is a temperature sensor. That temperature sensor feeds information back to the base unit so that the actual voltage or the actual current going into the iron can be altered to change the temperature. So when you turn your iron on, it'll heat up the tip when it gets to the operating temperature, which matches the temperature shown on the front here. You've got this dial to adjust it. Then the voltage or the current going to the iron will be reduced, so it just maintains that temperature. However, when you start putting the iron onto the soldering joint and it starts sucking heat out of here, then the temperature will drop and this base station is intelligent enough to turn the current back up again so that it'll provide more heat to the tip. So you get a constant temperature or nearly constant temperature at the tip of the iron. Now that's really great because as I said in my soldering tutorial, one of the big problems with the El Cheapo irons is they run too hot and they burn your flux off so you, it's really hard to do a good soldering job, especially if you can't, you're not skilled enough to do it very quickly. So these can make a big difference to your soldering uh, abilities. Now this one of course is made to a price. It's not a Hako or Heiko, depending on how you say it, what school you went to. It's not a Heiko, it is a knockoff of an earlier model Heiko than the one that I use myself. So what are, you, what are you compromising when you pay so much less money? And it is a lot less money. Uh, a Heiko, uh, what is it, what's mine? It's an 88 something rather. I'll figure what it is. I'll show you a picture. Here's my soldering arm or my soldering station. Now this one cost me about $100 US. That's for the 110 volt version because the 240 volt version was going to be nearly 200 New Zealand dollars, which at the time was about 160 US dollars. So for the price of the 240 volt one, I bought myself a 110 volt one and a transformer. And I still save some coin in the process. So <laughs> there you go, I'm running American voltages in my lab here for some of my gear because it's just more economic to do that. But what are you gonna what's the difference? Well, first of all, obviously this is plasticky, light, it's you know the, the build quality just isn't the same, obviously. That's a first startup. I mean, even little things like this knob here, there's got a little tit on it there, you can hardly see it. It's hard to see where it's pointing to the actual temperature. So at a glance, it's very hard to tell what you've got this set to. The, the Heiko, other, otherwise, uh, I should say the Heiko iron, has a much better knob, so you can see at a glance where your temperature is. Also, little things like our soldering iron here, this has a nice flexible silicon cord, not quite as flexible as the Heiko, um, and it's not as long. I mean, this cord here is, I don't know, what is it? Let me see, measure it out. It's about a metre long, about a metre long. Uh, but the one on the Heiko is about well, 1.3 metres long. The difference is sometimes you need that little bit of extra reach when you're trying to solder something that's a little bit further from the base station. It's a small thing, but wow, trust me, the number of times I have uh, just about reached the limit of my lead length on my Heiko iron is impressive. So yeah, that's something that you've got to consider. Probably a small thing. The different connectors too. Actually, I kind of like this connector. It's like a microphone connector over the really quite simple DIN connector that my Heiko uses. So that's, you know, that's a point in favour of this as far as I'm concerned. One other thing is this thing here. This is your, um, your soldering iron holder. Now it looks you know, pretty straightforward. It has a sponge in it. It's a really thin sponge. Well, they swell when you heat them up, but it's nowhere near as thick as, for example, as the sponge out of my Heiko. You can compare the two. Both of these are dry at the moment. You can see there's a huge difference. So this stays wet a lot longer than this does, which you know, in summer, um, these can dry out in a matter of hours. And if you're sitting there at the bench trying to do a whole lot of soldering, it's annoying to have to go and top it up. Also, if we look at my Heiko stand, you can see that there's a, there's a gold metal, well, it's like a wire wool ball in there. And I use that a lot, lots more than the little moist thing in there, because you can just give your iron a quick swipe on there, it takes the excess solder off. You don't get one of those with the cheapy one, which is a shame, but you can buy separate ones, standalone ones for 
eight or nine dollars or something. So maybe, but then you've got more bench space used up, you know. And actually, this one here is actually kind of it's about the same footprint. But one thing I notice immediately is this is really heavy. It's got a heavy metal base plate. This is really light. It's quite light. Also, with the Heiko one, um, you can pop. Oops, just making a mess here because <laughs> all the solder's falling out. But you can pop the base off. It's got a little button here. If I can remember how to use it, pull that down. There we go. And you can get in there and you can clean out the solder really easily because it does accumulate in there. On this one, see now it's full of solder because I spilt the stuff off there. Um, there's no such thing. You have to undo this, these screws to get at it. So convenience. You're paying for convenience and also uh, functionality because I'll just put these on the scale. See what the difference in weight is between the, the Heiko stand and the Hobby King one. All right, here is the Hobby King version. It's 141 grams. Quite light. Let's put the Heiko on there. Wow, 326 grams. It's a huge, huge difference. This is more than twice as heavy. And why is that a really good feature? Well, it's a really good feature because this is sitting on your bench and if you just it doesn't take much to move this around. It's a real pain because these can, you know, you've got other stuff on your bench and this thing gets moved around. It, it really, it can be annoying. Trust me, it can be very, very annoying. Let's take the, the Heiko and compare the two. Now, when I put my Heiko iron in there, you'll be able to see that it's much less likely to move around on the bench. You can move it if you try hard, but it's not as free-floating, one might say, as the cheaper base stand. So it's another, again, it's another small thing. So the reality is that these are actually pretty damn good value for your, you know, for somebody who's not going to do a lot of soldering, but wants something a whole lot better than the usual pencil lines. Now, they deliver in terms of having temperature control. It may not be as precise as a genuine Heiko, but it's still a whole lot better than your unregulated irons. It's got a pretty, you know, marginal sort of a stand without any metal, without any wire wool, but hey, it's still good enough, unless you're going to be doing extended session soldering, that's probably going to work just fine for you. So considering the price difference, I mean, I would say if you don't have one of these, go and buy one, because you'd be silly not to, it'll make such a difference to your soldering, it'll make you be able to do real professional jobs just like me, and you know, that's important, in fact, and if you're using leaded solder, you can even wind the damn thing right up, it's got a maximum of, what is it, it says 896. Um, degrees I think that's Fahrenheit 480 Celsius more than hot enough to deal with any of the standard solders out there only thing I don't really like about this iron is the tip the tip they provide with the iron is just too small that's just way 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 too small let's have a closer look at it okay there's the tip and one of the problems with the tip that's small is that there's not enough area here on the end to transfer the heat to the work it's really hard to heat up work if you've only got a small tip because there's only a small amount of heat or, or tip actually touching the solder, touching the joint you're working on. Compare that to my Heiko. I have two tips I use regularly. This is the big one I use for doing XT60s and soldering large areas. Now look at the surface contact area of that tip. That's huge. That means that the full heat of my soldering iron can be transferred into the joint really, really quickly. I can get really good soldered joints. And of course I have another tip for working on smaller work. And this tip is what I use for even the smallest surface mount component work. And it is still bigger, still much bigger than the one that's there. You can see how this one has, again, it has a flat on the end. Unless you're doing specialist soldering, you really want one that has a flat on the end because the flat area will conduct the heat or provide maximum contact area with the stuff you're soldering. This tip, I wouldn't give it to my worst enemy. So if you're going to buy one of these irons, make sure you buy some tips. Get yourself a big one for your XT60 work like this so that you can transfer the heat really quickly. Get yourself a smaller, but not too small. I think this is um, 1.6 mils or something, which is, I don't know what's about, um, eight, I don't know what that is, no, a six, sixteenth of an inch or something. That's Those are the two tip sizes that you want to have on your soldering iron bench. Um, this one, throw it away or stab something with it. Go and stab a criminal. Uh, I shouldn't incite violence. But anyway, yeah, it's, it's really, make a dart out of it or something, because it's really kind of useless, it's kind of sucky for, for soldering. Anything you're likely to encounter in the hobby, unless you're into really, really micro fine work which really you want to use a reflow station for. Anyway, so there you go. That's my little look at the Yihu R936 soldering station, which is purchased from Hobby King. And of course, other things you'll want if you're going to do a lot of soldering are some desoldering braid. This is really useful. It like, acts like a wick. And when you heat up your solder and put this flux over the top, it sucks the solder up. Capillary action draws the solder into this braid, which takes solder out of the joints. If you want to remove something or you've got too much solder on there, other things, of course, are your flux pins. 
Got to have flux pens. I've got three here. Different fluxes for different applications. But if you can only get one, then get yourself a Kester flux pen. This is the one. This is a water-soluble, neutral pH flux pen. This is just the bee's knees. I've had this for years, and it's still got about half its content. So you don't have to spend a lot of money, and you can get really good. Made in Mexico, not even China. How about that? What are these ones? Where are these? This is also a Kester pen, but I have a feeling. Um, made in USA of US. Is it really made in the USA? I bought this on eBay. Okay, so that's a Kester as well. This is a rosin core one, and I don't know what. Oh, this is a rosin flux, and this is low solids, no clean. So different fluxes for different purposes, but these make a big difference to your soldering too. So there you go. If you've got any questions, any comments, if you want to know anything else about soldering, let me know in the comments section of this video, and I'll do my best to accommodate you with some answers. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Give this video a thumbs up if you like, and don't forget, you can always make a donation to RC Model Reviews through the rcmodelreviews.com website. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Okay, you talked me into it. It wouldn't be a review without a teardown, would it? So here we go. This is what you get inside your, your cheap supply transformer. This will be different for each country. This is a 240 volt one. And let's have a look. We've got, ooh, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's made to a price, people. Don't forget that. If mains wiring coming in here, go straight onto the circuit. I don't like that. Look, ooh, that can, in fact, it's already started to fray. That wire is almost off because there's no support for this wire. It comes straight on there. You can see it's, it's frayed. It's, it's horrible. It's awful. That's the power switch. Um, yeah, I'm not at all happy with that. I think I shall put some hot glue on this so that that's not going to break because honestly, that's not far away from breaking. I'll do a macro shot on it. Here we go. You can see how there's no support for that wire at all. It's flexing. That's terrible. Considering that this is, um, you know, carrying the power off to the transformer. Um, where's our mains phase input? The blue? Yeah, okay, we've got a blue wire here. That's, again, that's not supported, but it doesn't seem to have the same ooh, um, tendency to, to fatigue as the other one. So, yep. And of course, there's a switch in, uh, sorry, a fuse in here. We've got a little fuse, which is hardwired to the board. Um, that's not too bad, and it's all mounted on this power switch down here. So, yeah, if you get one of these, you might pay to take it apart. Just put a bit of um, hot glue on there. Hot glue's fine, and that'll just take the stress off these wires. So they're not going to break. You won't turn it on one day and find, oh, it doesn't work anymore. And, of course, if your soldering iron's broken, how are you going to solder the wire back on? Ha ha. And here's the controller board in the back here. We've got a little device down here, a little switching transistor. It might be a triac, I'm not sure. I haven't had a look at the numbers. Um, so the power goes in through here. Obviously these wires are not very heavy. This is only a low wattage. What is the power, what is the transformer? Has it got a wattage rating on it? No, it doesn't. So I don't know what the wattage rating is, but it's not going to be very high. This is where all the electronic goodness takes place. Some bodge, I mean, yeah, this is made to a price. As I say. Look at this capacitor up here. It is bodged on the back of the board and it's sort of held in place, not, not even held in place by that terminal. So again, vibration, is it glued? I don't know if they've glued it. Yes, they've glued it. Good on them. They put some glue on there at least to stop it vibrating in the breeze. Um, I'm not going to take this board out. On the other side, there'll just be a, uh, some components. It's through hole circuitry, so it's it's not state of the art. But you know, it's made to a price, and you know that's what you get for your money. There's a little trimmer in there for adjusting the temperature, make sure the calibration's right. Most people will just leave that alone unless you've got something to measure the soldering iron tip temperature with any accuracy. But there you go. That's what's in it. That's what you get. So if you get one. I would recommend, especially if you're going to be moving it around any vibration, take it apart, unplug it, and put some hot glue on these wires just to give them extra support.